just want to pull up the minutes. So yeah, so basically the only thing that we have like on our official agenda is um, talking about the public engagement process and like, I think, you know, using, potentially using one as the case study, but then like helping to say, okay, here's like what that looks like in reality. And then there's like a whole bunch of stuff of like continued upcoming agenda items. I think there's some report backs to be doing about the DEI training for city committees and for staff. Um, but then there's other things on that agenda too. And so I think, you know, as time permits and uh, as we have report backs, that, that should be good. Do, do we have any idea how that's going to, how, how we're, we're going to get that information about the DAI for city committees? I have some emails. So oh, okay. that, yeah, right. for that Cameron CC'd me in. Yep. Cool. Right. Okay. Okay. But then if folks want to pull up the minutes from September 7th, when we are in person, when our meeting started at 8.23. So great. Mm -hmm. I was a few minutes late because my dog was being very bad and she's being bad again. What the heck? Stealing hats and things. She's not supposed to play us with his toys. Um, does anyone want to make a motion? I move we approve the minutes. Does anyone want a second? I think. Was there a second there? That was Lauren. Oh, Lauren, okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Any opposed? All right, great. We got the motion, the minutes. Um, and then, yeah, any, okay, yeah, let's just dive into the public engagement process. So I think that's what you guys were just reporting back on some of the meetings and stuff, but I don't know, Michael, Jeremy, do you guys wanna take it away? What you were well the only thing i have is this memo that i that i thought i had sent around earlier but i, oh, I guess yeah. I, I guess i didn't push the send button <laughs> because i could find it at any rate um i had as i was supposed to i had contacted someone i thought I, I, it turned out to be josh jerome who was i guess the city he's a, he's a city employee right um yeah so he's working with that committee, and then he and he put me in touch with um, Monica Di Giovanni. Um, and it took a while for us to get started on this. Actually, the as you see, the um, the the email from her came after our last meeting. So um, it's not clear to me what they want from us, but I think what she's trying to do is to organize uh, a consortium of arts organizations in the city and, and do training for uh, DEI training for them, with them. And um, it looks as if, to me, as if what, what she's planning to do is to go to the city council to get some money to support that training. Uh, that's the way I read this, but um, so it's not clear what what role we would play in this. Except I did have a com a short conversation with Kathy Johnson um, about about it. She said, "Yeah, there are a lot of people doing this, and actually, they are her organization is totally overwhelmed, and and that and that's true for most of the consulting organizations on this." Um, so, you know, that's the good news and bad news. It means that um, people are taking it seriously, but then getting the help they want is getting harder because uh, everyone's got more on their plate than they can manage already. So I, I, I said to Kathy that, you know, what our committee might consider as being a kind of, um, what was the word, clearinghouse. Right. You know, if if we hear of you know people who are trying to find and get some of this done, we could have a list of consultants that we could send them, and let them do the negotiation. Uh, I wasn't clear what the grant 
um, that we, we talked about it last time. P, what is it? PPI or something like that? The grant program? I don't see that. No, I'm not sure. So basically, I'm not sure where the money is going to come from for these. And, and I think that's going to be the big stumbling block. It's, you know, uh, to, and I, um, you know, I told, I, I responded to Monica that, you know, once we had our meeting, I'd get back in touch with her. So that's where we are with that. Mm -hmm. This is a very vague request here. I'm not even sure it's a request. It's just, you know, here's a, here's a situation. Well, so I think this is more of like the DEI training than the of the other piece so i'm just naming that and i think that's fine if we start there too and yeah cameron reached out to creative discourse abundant sun and what was the other one sorry um, well, i think she, I, kathy indicated that um the i think they applied for though they may even have a contract with the city her her organization so yeah so that's they heard they have been in communication and because because the city also wants to get like training on the books for all staff right. and then cameron's idea was like if we're doing this for staff we can just invite in um city committee member you know city committee mm -hmm. members want to participate and so CQ strategy is the only one that I've seen a response to, which is what I was hoping Cameron could join to be able to share more. And they basically said it's best if you like keep them small, like keep the, the groups small, like 25 to 30 people per like facilitator. Um, and based on just like the numbers of the, um, like that there's 115 full-time staff, just looking at that, you know, that would be like four separate sessions. And so like, that would be like, if they're half day sessions, that would be like four full days to be about like over $5,000. Um, you know, it's like $2,700 per facilitator. And then like time. So if it was like, you know, two days, but with two facilitators or something like that, um, you know, it just, it adds up fast. And so then if we were to like add on, you know, we could just like say, because it sounds like they're like, it's best if you keep them under 30, but also we, you know, you could have up to 40 people per facilitator uh, per session. And then you can, um, you know, we could maybe add in city committee members. Um, but then it does sound like the Public Arts Commission, I didn't quite read the, how you read it right now of like that they want to like pull together all of the different arts organizations and kind of run their own session, like as an arts community kind of thing. Is that kind of what you're, or how you're reading? What she's saying? Uh, let's see. I just because you know maybe it could be like four sessions for staff and then one for all the arts organizations mm -hmm. and then one for right. yeah uh, everyone, conversations. All, everyone else who wants to go. Right. But it's also like half a half day that would be like taking time off of work and um, unless it was being offered yeah on a weekend or evening time. Well. I mean, I, yeah, the second, the par the last paragraph there, the third paragraph, um, that's pretty much what she discussed. But I guess the, the first thing that she's trying to do is to, part, part, she's talking about partnering with other Montpelier arts organizations. Right. Um, and, you know, and that's, that's where I, that's where I sort of stopped paying attention after that. But then um, I see it, the last sentence that she wants to, to be done for all the city commissions or committees too. But she, but a, she wants suggesting to start, that a conversation to, specifically focused on the arts. Yeah, yeah right. is she really interesting. Yeah. Right. So that that's really why I thought that she was just she had that group in yeah. mind. And I do think it, you know, there's also a difference between what committees and commissions do and what staff you know, what city staff does. And I, I think trying to sort of put those two together would would dilute dilute it so much for each one that nobody would really come away satisfied. Sorry, what are you saying there? Like that we should well, I mean, it out I, into separate I, groups? She, I mean her plan is well, well, you know, do go ahead and do these arts, do the ones that you have planned. And then have include one for commission, you know, include commissioners in it, 
Um, and, and I think we need to be careful not to confuse what committees and commissions do and with what city employees are doing. Right. So not inviting. Well, right. And then that also makes sense to like not assume that committee members can like take a half day off of work, right. but like to like yeah. offer something for city committee members that's right. and, truly and, separate. And as I understood, and as I understood our earlier conversations, we were focusing on working more with, co with committees and committee commissioners because that's the, that's, that, that, that's the only really organization, a group of people that we can kind of corral into doing right. these, these programs. Whereas the city employees, they, they're told that, you know, you have to come, they'll do it. But... And I just, I think Cameron was like, want you know wanting to do something for city staff but that i think it could be cool it could be cool to have it the same training be offered to like you know have it be equal i don't know what i'm trying to say consistent that's the word i'm looking for i'm still my first cup of coffee yeah well i mean, think we're going to do that we really we really need and and the cq strategies is going to be the ones doing it i think we really need to talk with them to find out yeah. if they think adding a small contingency of committee or commissioners um, is consistent with their plan, would be consistent with their plan. I don't think we can just sort of put, you know, impose that on them. Okay, to pivot a little bit here, we reached out to three different folks. We only heard back from CQ strategies. Do we want to just move, continue to move forward with them unless we hear anything different from other folks? Like, they're based in Montpelier. You know, do we have any have any concerns with just moving with CQ strategies too for the city or for city committees, and or yeah, like just start having those conversations. Um, a question I have is, what to what degree are we involved in those conversations? It sounds like this is a city contracting issue. I'm not clear what our role is. Right, me too. That's what Michael is, yeah. Lauren, do you have any anything that you can tell us about this, or do you know yet what what's going on with this? I no, I I don't. I mean, I I I don't think it's unusual for like a committee like ours to be involved if we have thoughts on it, um, or like. I would think they would welcome advice or whatever. Um, you know, I like I my only I guess my question about the you know which vendor to use. I mean, I'm wondering if they're going to have to put out like an RFP or something just for whatever you know city boxes need to be checked to make sure, or maybe what maybe the request for proposals they put out whatever Cameron had done to the three groups is enough um, to satisfy that. But um, I mean, I wonder too, less on that point, but just if Kathy was saying CQ strategies is really booked up, like does she have recommendations of other groups? Are they sending people to others? Um, you know, what's the timeline when we could get in with them if they're mm -hmm. overwhelmed right now, um, which, it might be, you know, it might take some time to line up the funding and figure out some of these questions around who's participating and stuff anyway on our end. So maybe that's all fine, but um, those could be some questions we could, I don't, do we know yet who's going to be our city staff point person well, until any assistance? I don't, yeah. Is there a budget line item for this, like under HR for? For the city? Uh, not that I remember. Um, I mean, there might be some kind of general like professional development line or something. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something like that. Um, I mean, one that's more of a like next year thing, but I, I do wonder if for like the CJAC budget request, if we should be thinking about more of a like 
annual line item that can cover stipends and or training mm -hmm. right. and or like with some more flexibility, like many other committees have something more like that instead of trying to get funding like line by line and then just kind of keep council updated on what the funding's being used for. Um, and because I could see like if the stipend money could be a place where if we're not fully using it, that there might be some flexibility to mm -hmm. trainings from that, right. for example, but I don't want to like spend it before people have the chance to use it. Mm -hmm. And it's really early in the fiscal year. So. <laughs> but we should ask Cameron about, I think like, is there training slash professional development money that could be used for this? Um, And what like requirements do they have about putting this out for bid or whatever? I'm just capturing this in an email that I can just hit send to Cameron when we're done with this conversation. But thank you for Dale for taking notes, Michael. I am noticing the obvious, which is once Cameron departs, we're going to be in an information vacuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I wonder what our plan is for that. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, Shana, maybe you need to talk with Bill Fraser about that and soon. Yeah. Yeah, two weeks ago, I think she didn't know, but. Um... Well, I guess in the meantime, we could find out from Cameron what, um, I, I, you know, she's probably sort of up to her eyebrows trying just to get out the door. Um, do you want to do that, Shana? Do you want someone, one of us to do that? Yeah, I can get that. Well, it looks to me like uh, as if the the one thing that we might be able to do, if the if the other, the plan for including city commissioners, committee members doesn't with with the staff doesn't work out, um, we could try to collect information about other organiz other organizations that are doing consulting, and again to act as a kind of clearinghouse. Here's here are people we know about and contact them and find out what you want to do. I mean, I, they, this request is not very clear about what specifically they want to accomplish, um, but um, I, I, don't, I don't see what else there is available because we don't have, we can't, we don't have the money to pass around. It's not our money. Mm -hmm. I'll ask all of these, thanks. I am just being like, oh yeah, information vacuum without Cameron. Here mm -hmm. we go. Okay, um, oh, go ahead. It might be helpful to, I mean, I'm wondering, we've got now this request from Monica at the Arts Commission. Um, I mean, maybe in crafting a budget request for next year, I mean, you know, that means money like starting next July. Um, and, but, you know, maybe we can do stuff in the interim, but if we knew there was demand for this, it would help, help us be able to set money aside. I mean, they're already like okay. healthcare costs are going to, like, it's like, it's going to be a tough budget. So making sure that we've got like clear needs um, that between like staff training and commission training, um, committee training. Um, I think we're going to need real clarity that there's like demand for it and a need for it um, to make the case. And then I do think we had city committee fund, but we had a budget that we have not spent because we didn't 
use do the kind of year two with creative discourse. Is that correct? Can we roll that over potentially too? If 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 you know CQ strategies can't do this training for city committees this year, could we like do that in January or you know in next? Well, no, it's fiscal year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're already in the next fiscal year. Yeah. Is that rolled over? That's what I stated it last year. I'd have to look at because I don't I don't know exactly what we spent the last fiscal year to this. Um I think that's how they had treated it. So we are now we we now have money from the fiscal year 22. Right, and then we're talking about getting on the budget for fiscal twenty three to continue to to be able to distribute somehow on training. Is that what you're talking about, Shana Laurel? Lauren? But just different date. Now we're in fiscal year twenty three. Right. In September. Okay. Right. And so, can we use fiscal year twenty two? What happened to fiscal year twenty two funds, and can we use them this fiscal year? Yep. Okay. FY twenty two. Right, and there was some, so there was the stipend money, but then there was also money for ongoing creative discourse mm -hmm. for, for F year 20, fiscal year 23. If that's not happening, I mean, maybe there is a small pot of money for some trainings, if we thought that was like the best use of it for this fiscal year. And, and maybe like you said, maybe there's some rollover money too still that wasn't spent that is still available to us, um, but we have to check on that. Clarification on that. The stipend money is coming out of our fiscal note, or was that a separate li li line? That was a separate line item. Oh, okay. In addition, so that was 30,000, I think is where right. it in addition to maybe like 10,000 for creative discourse or something, I think. That's what I remember. And I think we spent like 3,000 of that in like consulting and reviewing materials, but. Cool. Anything else on this, or should we go to talk about process options? Okay, let me pull up the. So I think. What, what topic are we on now? On the um, whoop whoop whoop. Sorry. Where is it? Creating a public engagement process outline. And so I think what I was, I've been thinking about the past couple of weeks on this and reviewing the materials that you shared, Jeremy, from the VCRD summit. I think like we could go about this with more of like a place specific, clear, like here's what good public process looks like here in Montpelier kind of across the board, kind of recognizing that it's always going to be imperfect. It's like, you know, gonna be shifting and moving and changing based on like, you know, who lives here, <laughs> kind of what the issue is and everything else. Or it could be more of this like temp, like more like our budget um, equity toolkit, which is more of like, can, here are some things to consider when developing a public process, which I think is like less helpful, but is like a like safe. I was like real. I was like it's a safer option because we're not going to like leave anything off, you know, like as a as a committee. Um, but is ultimately like less helpful for for people to use. And like thinking like the 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 test study here is like the Elks Lodge property process and like how they've hired someone to, you know, run this public process, but that they're not like from here or like necessarily thinking about it through like an equity lens. And so uh, wanting to make sure we bring that to this process, but it, in doing so kind of create a template for what it could look like to do um, equitable public engagement processes 
writ large for the city, you know? Um, so I'm not sure if that's like a helpful place to start, but that's because I keep being like the feeling, feeling so stuck and then being like, oh, it doesn't need to be this hard. Like we could do like, uh, here are some same things to consider and like just problematize, but not be like, here's what we think you should do. Yeah, I, I think that makes sense. It would be tough to do a one size fits all yeah. like, process template. So the thing that you said makes me think of, you know, the playbook that you might, you might hear in other contexts of like, here are the issues, here are the things that you might want to think about. And if you're faced with this challenge versus this challenge, here are some, some tactics or approaches to use. Um, and I think I, I started pulling some things out of that presentation I shared. And I think there are some good, what the presenter called tips um, that could help us think through what a, a playbook or a set of recommendations might be. I'm um, sorry, I'm not familiar with the playbook. What is that like? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's kind of, it's a little bit specific to my my industry. It's like, you might... So people are looking for methods and tools to do certain things, accomplish certain things in their work. A playbook would be in a kind of a, a collection of methods and tools to accomplish certain goals that you might have as a, a team in a business or a business itself. Um, so it's for funny. example, our playbook, the goal of our playbook is you need equitable, effective public engagement for your thing, city person. Um, in our playbook, we're gonna show you the right questions to ask, um, some specific strategies or tactics that you might use depending on what your goal is. Um, and so you kind of mix and match, take what you need to run your play, essentially. Yeah. Does that make sense? A little bit more, but maybe <laughs> in practice too. <laughs> so you're basically so, you're borrowing from football. Is that it? It's, it, it's a bit a of a sports. Piece of listen, listen. Nadia, and I'm not a sports person, so I can't get into the intricacies of how that maps. Um, so, for example, I'm looking, I've just got some stuff pulled up. Um, can I share my screen? I'm going to just do that. It looks like I can, yeah. So. Uh, okay, so here we go. So for example, in that that talk I saw, I thought this is a really helpful kind of way to think about different levels of participation you might need for your project, your campaign, whatever it is. So this would be an important piece of the puzzle of putting together what you're going to do around public engagement by like really getting really clear on what your goal is. And then from the goal of your, your engagement, um, you kind of cascade to, okay, what are the things you need to do to achieve your goal around public engagement for this? Um, so this could be one way that we start thinking about it too. It's like putting together what the, the plays are. So, so as like the like informed consult, like the, the columns, the plays that like then people the column feel like, are the goal. So right. So it sounds like, like I feel we need all of them. Yeah. The project that feels like it's going to be more of a collaborate goal because they want, as I understand it, and what I'm gathering from Front Porch Forum <laughs> is people want to have really specific input into what the vision for that property is, what happens on it. So they wanna to come to the table with ideas. They wanna influence decisions. Um, I don't think it's empower because that's probably too, too far for what the city is trying to do. Um, but it may be that the city really wants to you know, bring in community members to solicit ideas, to have discussions about the vision for that. Um, so the collaborate would, that would be the goal perhaps of that public participation and public engagement process. And then everything that you're going to do around public engagement has to reinforce that goal of bringing in the community as a collaborator. 
And I would, my assessment of what the original proposal from the consultant is, it was more of like a consult goal. Okay. Like not, and then council was like, we want a more robust and um, more towards involve or collaborate. And yeah. what we felt yeah. like we got was more of a, mm -hmm. like, let's just go out and gather a little bit of input and bring it back. Kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which that's that's an I mean it's a really interesting conversation because you you need to be set the right expectations for what the public is going to be influencing or the degree of their participation. Um, yeah, and that it doesn't fall apart. <laughs> yeah, and I think part of like so when we've talked about it at council, there's definitely some hesitation from city staff. I would say of like making sure that expectations are clear of kind of particularly like where we are in the process. Like once we make a decision and are moving ahead, like then it, it takes time to do the, the engineering and like work, be working through the things. And it mm -hmm. can't be that like the process is still up for debate or input or change at that point. Like you could, you know, you can change some things or if you learn more, but like, mm -hmm. it, like we need to be clear about when, when decisions are being made and how decisions mm -hmm made so that it can keep moving forward without an expectation of ongoing kind of input and changes to it like that's yeah. and so like there's there's nervousness i sensed from staff that like people mm -hmm. would have a sense of like well we can right. keep influencing it and we can keep changing it like we like we might have better ideas and it's like at some point we have to make decisions and so it's just not an empower process yeah yeah, that's really and, uh, yeah, and it just takes time to do things, and so mm -hmm. even if you did an empowerment process at some point, if you're going to build housing, like you need to decide, like here's the housing we're building, and and then it still takes time, and people might feel like, oh, are we still in the gathering? So anyway, just just flagging this. I've done no, that that's from, from so important because what I've seen is that I don't know if the, if it's just a mismatch in terms of perception or if the city is doing this or not, but. It doesn't seem like those expectations are ever clearly articulated because it's it seems like any any decision is up for debate here mm -hmm. like nothing is ever final look at the parking garage mm -hmm. okay, what's going on with the elks club yeah so it's like there yeah. is no final decision ever that seems to um, allow people to move forward to the next thing yeah i i, I think that. <laughs> That feels true. Um, and, and maybe part of like what we could like offer is, I think part of it too is like there's um, public engagement opportunities offered up front. And then there's an expectation that if people want to keep following it, like come to city council meetings, but very mm -hmm. few people do. And so mm -hmm. as opposed to like, and then let's continue that outreach to like share okay here's what we heard here's the input here's how public um engagement shaped what we came up with but here is what we're doing and here's like here's what the next like I, I think that kind of communication doesn't mm -hmm. follow through as much or expect people to find it in ways that people really aren't or not that many people are so maybe that's part of it too is like the being clear on like when and how decisions are being made and mm -hmm. how being communicated back out to people mm -hmm. in better and more robust ways so more people are actually like understanding where we are in the process and where we are not in the process. I'm wondering if anybody, once the transit center was finished, if anybody mm -hmm. actually wrote down and, you know, uh, and, and had conclusions about how that process worked. It, it, it went on for a long time, that's true. And there were some mitigating circumstances having to do with properties and uh, clean up and environmental cleanup. But there were meetings and there were changes that were made along the way. But, uh, has anybody recorded any of that information? Do you know? Or like evaluated too, not just yeah, right. yeah. Because that would be, that's one that we at least got finished. <laughs> knows and we could you know we could encourage whoever does that kind of stuff for the city to write it up and and you know pass it around so people can evaluate what on what, what how it worked and what would we change from that process to make it more eff effective as well as more efficient 
Now, worry about efficiency because when you start focusing on that, that's where you start cutting corners. But I, so I, you know, I would kind of insist that it be both effective and efficient. Did they hire consultants for that process? And who was that? And can we? Well, there was a committee. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, that was involved in setting parameters, I guess, for an RFP. Yeah, I'm just like, I think that's been happening the entire time I've lived in Montpelier. <laughs> and I mean, it's been in place for a couple of years now, I guess, too. But I'm just yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah, it took a long time. Yeah. Probably because of the sale the sale of property partly because there was a, a, an environmental um, imp, um what do you call it you know it was it was a, it was a hot spot and it had to be cleaned out yeah lauren your your um comments made me think of a what i've, I've seen a really good example of that kind of ongoing um kind of progress report general updates. There's a guy, uh, I don't know, there's a person um, who posts on Front Porch Forum regularly. They seem to be involved with the Central Vermont Broadband Initiative. And this person posts these amazingly informative updates about what the commission's doing, what progress they've made, how they're getting closer to their goals. It's, I mean, you, you might miss it because it's in Front Porch Forum, but um, it's an example of the kind of thing I think you're talking about that can be really helpful to kind of bring shed some light on these really complex projects. Yeah, I could see it being helpful for us. I mean, so like the firm or the, the consultants that we have, I mean, it's mostly like engineers and stuff. So I think my guess is without some prompting, it would be mm -hmm. like, We'll do a bunch of public process and then it will go dark for like mm -hmm. a year mm -hmm. like, huh. we, yeah. <laughs> like, as a bunch of like engineering, you know, and so like right. they'll be working hard, but it will be very feel like a black box to people in the community um, without some like deliberate um, attention to like, what is that ongoing communication? So maybe it is like, is there a point person? I mean, somebody's in charge in that team of the public engagement. So maybe it's like, you know, an expectation of like monthly updates that are written in a format that can po be posted to front porch forum, you know, even if it feels to them like we're just doing it, like, like it's the same thing again, but we're mm -hmm. like a little farther along in the mm -hmm. environmental assessment or whatever it is, but like, um, I mean, maybe we could send an example of the broadband mm -hmm. thing. Um, as like these kinds of updates, like we're the kind of community who wants to know <laughs> what's right. going on. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm giggling at myself because I'm like wait what if we did like a meta thing where we're like we did a process to help figure out what people want from a process <laughs> <laughs> I don't just kidding <laughs> I, I appreciate that level of investigation I think there's <laughs> plenty of best practices out here that we yeah, can yeah. put something together <laughs> It was really helpful, I feel like, just to say it out loud that, like, pe people do the work and then it steps away for an, a year. And, like, keeping people like that, it seems so obvious, but I've never, like, he like actually heard that and thought that out loud mm -hmm. before. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, would it be, so I, I, would it be helpful to just take a look together quickly at some of the things that I took away from that presentation that could maybe That'd get really started helpful. thinking? Mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, okay. All right. So I, we talked about this. Um, which is really just a way to kind of identify your goal. Um, so I like 
it comes from this organization, IAP2. I don't, I don't know that organization, but I like that framework. Um, and then the presenter kind of listed a bunch of different tips. Um, but at one point, she was proposing, well, there are some big questions around engagement that you need to think about, which I think these are the things that we've been actively discussing in our, our committee work, too. It's like, also questions we're asking with the budget equity stuff. Um, you know, who has been excluded or absent in past public engagement processes, um, who may not feel welcome, who's most impacted by a given project, who is most likely to not know anything about this, um, who ha might have really interesting perspectives, um, and how do people really want to engage in the process. Um, so those are, I could imagine in a playbook having a list of those kinds of questions that a group would want to work through um, to start to think about who they want to bring into their process. Um, this is another really helpful reminder around what are the barriers to participation? Um, what are good incentives for getting people to participate? Um, so I think these, I think we probably are familiar with these kinds of things. Um, but again, if you're creating a process for somebody else to use, they may not be thinking about transportation. They may not be thinking about, um, accessibility issues. So, um, then there's a few things here that are more about like tactics, right? So there's, and we, I think we've struggled with this one, but just figuring out in our community, like where the nodes, what the networks are. So she talked about it in terms of connectors and ambassadors. So ambassadors, people who represent formally or informally certain groups. Um, they may be a key person in, a, in an organization. They may be a key person in a specific kind of community group. Um, and then a connector is someone who maybe is on the periphery, but just knows lots of people and connects with different groups. Um, so within your specific, I think we have, we've started to put together a list like that, um, but I want, it would be interesting to have kind of a master list for our community. Like, yeah. uh, and, do, we, do we have a list of that? I'm sorry. I'm I mean, not... we, I feel like we tried to do that with the creative discourse outreach. Okay. Um, I don't know if we have a list, yeah. Right. But it could be compiled with a little bit of work. Um, this is interesting, just thinking about the different structures in which participation might happen. Some are more formal um, and are about engaging with leadership. Um, some are more informal um, and more community focused. Um, I think there's many more probably to consider. Um, and then there's just a few things here around, you know, meeting people where they go. And a lot of, a lot of that presenter's examples from her work, her company's work was about, you know, going to where the people are to do kind of public participation type projects. Um, having a range of different methods is not every one channel or approach is gonna work for everyone. Um, and then this kind of like, just dump this in here, this list of different, she's calling micro strategies um, for an, in, ensuring equitable participation. Um, there's, a, I mean, there's quite a range of things here, like, well, don't do stuff on a religious holiday, <laughs> uh, for example. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, there's not a ton of depth in the presentation, but I think it's helpful for getting started thinking about it. Could you send that around? I sent the um, slide deck around, but I could certainly share, share this kind of summary, Michael. Is that what you're looking for? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I've been taking some ragged notes here. That's yeah, I can, I can. This would help. Export yeah, this the, as a PDF. The, it was a lot. It was like 70 slides or something. And it yeah, was, and there's a lot of yeah. photos too. So it's yeah. not, you're like, why am I looking at this? Yeah. Great. I was like, this is fun. I can see how presenting this would be really informative. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can, I'm not getting I can all share the this as a PDF. Okay. Easily. 
for you all. Good. Thank you. And this is the, the organization that did this is what, what's their name? Uh, Community Workshop, LLC. Because we'd have to certainly contact them if we were going to circulate this at all. Yeah, I think this is current state. This is just for our discussion. Um, right. I, I don't think, I think borrowing these tip strategies from this and other sources, I don't necessarily think we need to um, ask permission, but I'm right. sure they'd love to hear that we're incorporating these things. Mm -hmm. This is super helpful, Jeremy. Thank you for pulling this oh, together. Glad to, glad it's helpful. I mean, I could see like something like this summarized with like a, um, I forget the word you were using to describe it, but like a example of like questions to ask and mm -hmm. whatever. And then, and then using the Elks Club as like a case study of like, okay, and this is how we actually did it for this particular project. Mm -hmm. Things like, you know, okay, there's there's a bunch of city committees with like expertise in their own network. So like each project probably has some kind of city committee or two or three that could bring some, um, could help answer some of these questions of like, who, who should we be talking to about, um, you know, who's impacted but often left out or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so like the housing committee and whoever for the Elks Club. Um, so I could see like that combo of like a broad template and case study as being like helpful to mm -hmm. make it real for people. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. This is this is the sort of thing that if we um, if we could get permission from the the owners, we could circulate to committee chairs. Um, and uh, because I think it um, it doesn't take a whole lot of uh, narrative to see what's going on here that uh, and they don't have it's not as if they would have to be there to guide through people through it but mm -hmm. it's like our template um, and you know they, they would have some proprietary interest in keeping it theirs but may, maybe they would give permission or there would be a fee for it which would be worth it if we have then the permission their permission and understanding that we would circulate it to committees yeah i think my my sense of that is we're going to create something that's meets our needs um and is per perhaps gathered from a few different sources plus our own experiences uh -huh. um i don't I don't expect we need to ask permission, but I'm happy to inform them that we're borrowing from their work. I mean, they're the the woman who presented is clearly this is from not this is not her own framework, this okay. public participation spectrum. That's from another organization. Um, so um, I'm not I'm not overly concerned about the permission piece, but um, I think sharing. What we're doing with others who are doing similar things is a really useful thing to do as well and perhaps even get some feedback mm -hmm. on what we're thinking i'm sorry i was reading a thing as you were talking full transparency mm -hmm. but it was is there a next step here is it to bring her well i think her, yeah my sense is and i can I, en I enjoy this stuff. And so what if we started some kind of a, a document that we can pass around with kind of these broad buckets of things to be thinking about for public participation, public engagement, um, and we can start to just input our thoughts, things that we've been thinking about. Um, I mean, this this is a specific thing to really work on this community nodes and networks in Montpelier, like list resource, like, you know, you got to talk to can, 
you've got to check with all the relevant city committees, like whatever. Like there's a few different things, of course, but um, so I think I think within each of these, there's specific content that we could start inputting um, kind of individually and then come back to discuss. What do you think, Shana? Can we, I'm just thinking about logistics. Can we do that? Do we have to do that all separately and then bring it together? Is that the, do we have like a Google? Well, no, because it's just sharing information. So I think Jeremy could send it out to us. Yeah. We could all, if we're working on it offline, we could mm -hmm. individually send input to Jeremy who could compile okay. it for the next meeting. And mm -hmm. or if like, if we're working on it at our next meeting, for example, we can do it all together in like a Google. Yeah. Um, but okay. yeah, we, we can't be editing a Google doc mm -hmm. outside okay. of meeting time where we're all like looking at each other's comments and kind of having yeah. a conversation okay. offline. That's, that's um, so I will, I will put together a, an old fashioned Word document with just these kind of no. pre-populated with some of this stuff. And like, I'll take a stab at the, the categories. Cool. Um, and if you have time, start putting some stuff in and we can take a look at it together and work on it together next time we meet. That's oh, actually, so speaking of the next time we meet, the October 5th is Yom Kippur. And so I won't be on. Okay. <laughs> um, do we want, do you guys want to, you can do the meeting without me or um, I don't know if we want to like, or skip it to October 19th or yeah. Um, I'll be gone on the 19th. Okay. So let's meet on the 5th. Yeah. We'll just okay. well, we'll could, make could, sure there's a quorum. All right. I mean, the other, the other possibility would be um, to uh, meet another day that week yeah. or the next week which is between the two you know between our mm -hmm. two meetings and then we could because we you know we have such a slender quorum yeah mm -hmm. that um i think losing anyone means we we can't do, do any business at all so I, 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 have, I just am reminded that the first two weeks in October for me, work-wise, are pretty intense and on-site the full two weeks. Um, so I'm already anticipating a little bit of scheduling trouble. So both the 5th and the 12th, you're saying? Yeah. Um, now, evenings, which are not great for a lot of people, I know, but um, if we reschedule to an evening time, that's fine for me. Um, I could do October 12th before 8 p.m. I have a call eight to nine. That's a city council. Oh, mm -hmm. right, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem with Wednesdays, yeah. Or you could do the 19th in the morning or the evening. Yeah. yeah. I won't be able to and come all. I mean, I'm, I have a, fl a flight out at 7.15 in the morning. So. Woo! Yeah. It's not easy to get to Albuquerque from here. Yeah. <laughs> Whole day affair. Yeah. I mean, one question I have just in terms of how time sensitive for meeting, mm -hmm. like I do wonder about, um, like I feel like we need to, maybe another question for Cameron, Shana, when you're reaching out. Like, I mean, my sense is council gave some input on the public process for the consultants. Like, it's not clear to me, like when and how they're mm -hmm. going to move forward. So how, okay. how are we getting feedback and getting it to them in a, in like a timely enough way yeah. that we're actually incorporating it? Like, I don't want us to do all this work. And they're like, oh, we see like announcements for the first public forums. And we're like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> so I just want to make sure that we're provide. Yeah. Like we understand what, how we're able to interact with them. Like, Maybe it's even setting up a meeting with whoever mm -hmm. that liaison is soon and being like high level, this is the direction that we're thinking of going. And this is the kind of input we want to provide. Like, what's your timeline? What, yep. and just make sure that they are, um, yeah, open <laughs> and yeah. accepting of our feedback. So, so maybe it would be even like a random time that we just try to schedule with doodle or something with a consultant. Yeah. I'll add that in my email to Cameron. 
I, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit stuck on how, what our next steps should be. Cause Michael, then how long are you in Albuquerque for too? It's like, uh, just, I'll be back the following, uh, oh. later that Monday. Try all the, uh, the whole shebang and come back on Monday. Um, okay. So we could do like the 60, 26 or something. Yes. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Yes. Okay. Um, maybe I'll say, so, yeah, if we could do a doodle starting October 25th. And then do we want to just cancel the next two meetings? Does that? I mean, we could do um, either the 5th or 19th as like a working group where we're not making decisions, but could look at the mm -hmm. that Jeremy's um, and just be kind of have a, a work yeah, and, and we could leave it as oh, I'll try for the fifth anyway. I'll I'll try and get there. Um, but I, I'm having a little trouble predicting what that week's going to look like. We okay. Scheduled Jeremy is the 19th better because you get through those first two weeks, or is that still just like in it for you? No, the 19th, I'm pretty much in the clear. So maybe we skip the fifth when we don't have Shana and you're going to be really busy, and then we can meet on the 19th. I know Michael will be gone, but um, maybe Michael, if you're able to like send over whatever input to Jeremy, then we could bring that into the discussion. We just... Yeah, I could do that for sure. Okay. I'm sorry, I have to run. I'm already yeah. late yeah. for next, but um, the problem of Zoom meetings is just like, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> next, 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 next. Well. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.